What's up, everybody? The day you can call me Eater Prophet or Minister Erskine Gibson, it doesn't matter. I'm doing this video for both channels. This video is very, very important, and I want to get it seen by as many eyes as possible. It's called Massive Planets Times Rotation Speed Equals Gravitational Force. This is a formula that I came up with myself. I made this formula, and this is the most accurate formula to describe the gravitational force of a planet. Basically, we're taking the mass or weight of a planet and multiplying it times how fast the planet spins to come up with the actual gravitational force. You cannot take into account the gravitational force of a planet without taking into account how fast the planet spins. And I don't know of any formula that does that. And that's why I made this one. I want you to think about it like this. Think about if you go to an amusement park, you know, you get on that ride. It's like a, a round room and you put your back up against the wall and the room starts spinning real fast and the floor drops down and you're stuck to the wall. The centrifugal force that's holding you against that wall is gravity. Gravity is the force that holds you against the wall. Then when the room slows down, you're able to get back down again. The spinning is why the gravity keeps you there. Now, think about this on a planetary scale. We're talking leagues and leagues bigger and stronger gravitational force. It, it don't even compare to what happens in that room. We're talking massive, massive planets spinning and a force that they give off. You know, and the more mass they have, the more intense the gravitational force is. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to take that formula, uh, Massive planet times rotation speed equals gravitational force. And I'm going to plug in the numbers and I'm going to do the math and show you why my formula is the most accurate formula to describe gravitational force. At the end of the video, I'm going to list all the planets in order from strongest gravitational force to weakest so that you can gather more information and, and look at the data a little closer. OK, let's get started. The first planet we're going to look at is Jupiter. Now, remember, mass of planet times rotation speed. So the mass of Jupiter is 1.89813 times 10 to the 27th kilograms. Uh, Jupiter's rotation speed is 45,583 kilometers per hour. And yes, I am using the metric system for this. Now, when we multiply those two numbers, we get... 8.652245979E31. Now, E31 means 10 to the 31st power. So another way I could write this is 8.652245979 times 10 to the 31st power. But that is a significant number. Think about it, 10 to the 31st power is a ridiculous number. That's the kind of force that Jupiter, uh, that's the kind of gravitational force that uh, Jupiter gives off. All right, let's go to the next planet. Let's take a look at Earth. Uh, mass for Earth is 5.9. Oh, and by the way, we're going to use uh, Gibson's for the units of measurement. Since this is my formula, I feel Gibson is the most appropriate uh, unit of measurement. So anyway, the mass of Earth is 5.972 times 10 to the 24th kilogram. The speed of Earth is 1,574 kilometers per hour. So we're going to multiply 5.972 times 10 to the 24th power times 1,574, and we get 9.39928E27. So we can see that Jupiter's gravity is significantly stronger than Earth's gravity, which makes sense because Jupiter is much more massive and spins much faster than Earth. All right, let's uh, go to another planet. Let's take a look at Mercury. And... Mercury's mass is 3.825 times 10 to the 23rd kilogram. 
and uh, its rotation speed is 10.83 kilometers per hour. So we're going to multiply 3.825 times 10 to the 23rd power times 10.83 and we get 4.142475 E24. So we can see Mercury's gravity is significantly weaker than Earth's and, and even more significantly weaker than Jupiter's. Uh, so let's go on to the next planet. Uh, I think we're going to look at Neptune. Neptune's mass is 1.024 times 10 to the 26 kilogram times 9719, oh, 9719 kilometers per hour. That equals 9.952256 E29 Gibsons. Now, you can see that Neptune's gravitational force is significantly stronger than Earth's and uh, Mercury's, but not as strong as Jupiter's. And once again, it makes sense because Neptune is much more massive and spins much faster than Earth and Mercury, but not as massive or doesn't spin as fast as uh, Jupiter. So let's take a look next at Mars. Uh, the uh, mass of Mars is 6.39 times 10 to the 23rd kilogram and uh the speed of mars is 866 kilometers per hour so when we multiply that we get 5.533 e26 gibsons now uh as you can see mars is uh weaker than earth but stronger than mercury and definitely Excuse me, we get a Neptune and Jupiter. So, let's look at Venus. Venus mass is 4.867 times 10 to the 24th kilogram. Now, its speed is 6.52 kilometers per hour. And when we multiply that, we get 3.5. One seven three two eight four E twenty five Gibsons. So, you know, um, that's Venus. And keep in mind, like I said, I'm gonna show you all of these again at the end of the video in order from uh, strongest to weakest. So the next planet, let's take a look at is Saturn. Saturn is five point six eight three times ten to the 26 kilogram and its speed is 36,840 kilometers per hour. When we multiply that, we get 2.09361721 E31 Gibsons. So we can see Saturn also has massive gravity, almost up there with Jupiter to be honest. Uh, in fact, second only to Jupiter and mass and uh, ro rotation speed, which is why its gravitational force is second only to Jupiter. So far, anyway. So, lastly, let's take a look at Uranus. Uranus mass is 8.681 times 10 to the 25th kilograms. Its rotation speed is 14,900, I mean, 794 kilometers per hour. Uh, when we multiply that, we get 1.284267141 E30 Gibsons. So, you can see Uranus has a, a very powerful gravitational force as well. So now, as I promised, what I'm going to do is I'm gonna list these all in order for you and I'm gonna show them to you uh, strongest to weakest. Now, the first thing I want you to realize about the planets, and nobody may have told you this, but we have eight planets in our solar system and these planets are actually in pairs. Uh, Jupiter and Saturn, the two gas giants, are a pair and very similar in mass. Neptune and Uranus, the two ice giants, 
uh, appear and very similar in mass. Earth and Venus, the two terrestrial planets with the large electromagnetic field around them, they are a pair and they are both similar in mass. The two smaller terrestrial planets that don't have an electromagnetic field are Mars and Mercury. They are a pair and they are very similar in mass. Now, looking at this list, one thing you may notice is that even though Neptune has more mass than Uranus, Uranus has the stronger gravitational force. And the reason for that is because Uranus spins significantly faster than Neptune. The same thing also applies to Mars and Venus. Even though Venus has more mass, Mars spins significantly faster than Venus and therefore has a stronger gravitational force. Now, one other thing that's very interesting about my list and further validates my, my formula in my theory is that the two planets at the bottom of the list with the weakest gravitational forces, Venus and Mercury, neither of those planets have any moons. Neither of those planets have moons, so that just goes to show that they don't have the gravitational force to hold any moons in their orbit. Now, let me give you my theory, Minister Erskine Gibson's theory or either Prophet's theory, whichever you choose. This is my theory. I'm the only person who's ever said this. I will be the first person to say this right now. If you have a planet anywhere in the universe that's tidally locked to a star, that planet will not have moons. Let me repeat. If you have a planet that's tidally locked to a star anywhere in the universe and it doesn't spin, that planet will not have moons because if it doesn't spin, it can't exert any gravitational force. That's my theory. And I'm 100% positive that that theory will be proven one day. 100% positive. Anyway, that is all I have for y'all. Like I said, I hope y'all were able to take a look at the list. You know, maybe gather any data, no, you know, any comparisons you wanted to make. Seeing the strongest gravitational force from strongest to weakest. Um, I hope I was able to educate some people. I hope y'all found this entertaining. You know, I really hope this video gets to as many educators, teachers, professors, scientists as possible. I really want educated people to see this and see if they agree with my conclusions here. Anyway, y'all, thank you for watching this video. Please like the video. Please like this video and please share it with as many people as possible. I would appreciate that so much. You just don't know. Uh, please subscribe to the channel. Either one. I don't care. Both. And, uh, Please leave your thoughts, comments, or questions. I always respond to all videos, all questions, all responses, whatever. Everybody, stay safe, stay strong, stay healthy. Peace.